Hobbies. I love reading on personal development. I love listening to podcasts. I love cooking. I love creating recipes. I'm very artistic, so I like doing painting as well. I like to journal. I like to write. Um, I couldn't tell you if anything was staged because if it was, I'm not aware of it. But I do know that the seminar was not the best seminar. Um, and it was, it was, um, it was as real as what you saw on TV. I'm actually doing pretty well in quarantine, except for the fact that I'm actually more busier than when I was previously in quarantine. I literally feel like I can't catch a break because my daycare is closed. So I'm also being a stay at home mom as well. So from the beginning, I told Ash that I would not move to Australia whatsoever because I have my situations here with my children and uh, my family. And so he was open to moving to America. Oh, absolutely no hard feelings. I totally understand and it'd probably be something that I would be questioning as well. But due to an agreement with his, her oldest, my, my oldest daughter's father, we just choose to keep my oldest daughter off of my public platform. Yes, he was very supportive. Sorry, I'm trying to get underneath this thing. Um, he was definitely supportive and he was happy for me to go. He wasn't too happy about it being with a show, but he was definitely happy about um, the fact that I had a potential mate. You can't, you just can't. I am not, I, I just won't go there. Uh, marriage, who needs marriage? You know what I'm saying? Thank you, I appreciate that. And to be honest with you, all this stuff doesn't really bother me because I do realize that everybody has a different perspective in life and that is how they're going to always view every situation. So not everyone's gonna support me, that's okay. So prior to quarantine, I was a dental assistant. I was a dental assistant for 12 years. I taught dentistry, did some other stuff. I ran a restaurant, all that good stuff. But I now am into health and wellness and now I'm currently transitioning to other opportunities. I'm a cancer baby. Okay, I was born in July, July 16th. I'm a cancer all the way. I got that hard shell on the outside and I got that soft ooey gooey goodness once you get on the inside, which y'all could see on TV. I don't know, y'all just gonna have to find out. You're just gonna have to find out what's in the making, you know? Thanks, thanks, thanks. I appreciate that, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, actually we have had a lot of really, really funny conversations where we're literally crying, laughing so hard, which unfortunately they don't really get to show much of my funniness on TV, but what? Oh my God, I definitely feel like I have an old soul. I mean, from the moment I was born, I was always like way above other children. I'm just like, when I look at the sky, I'm not looking at the sky, I'm looking at the universe. And like, I would just do weird things. Thanks girl, head over to my IG channel. I give you a little bit of tips um, on my skincare routine and then also check out my Swede and Savory uh, account right there and you can find out what I eat normally and it will tell you a lot. Hmm, I've done some modeling in the past but never made it any more of that. And now I'm too fucking old. Really, Nick? Really, do I, do I use herbal essence shampoo and conditioner? Yeah, you should see me in the shower. I mean, you see those commercials. That's exactly how it is. Okay, super funny. This question keeps being brought to me multiple times. Like, a lot, actually. And I'm not even looking for it. So you'll just have to wait and see, everybody. That's a very odd question. Um, size 7? Oh my god, tacos! Give me some tacos! Yeah, I would love that. I'm trying to get around this thing. Okay, thank you so much, beautiful, but this is actually like grow out for almost the last like eight to nine months. I don't know the hair color on my hair. It was like a burgundy, but now it's completely washed out. This is my natural, girl! Oldest daughter's father, not so good because that's really not my doing. He just is better. Um, but my second daughter, oh my God, we have an amazing relationship. We don't even need to be in court and we work as a team and it's freaking awesome. And I love his girlfriend. It's great. What I think everyone should know is that I'm really not that serious of a person. I'm serious when I put my hard shell on and I'm protecting myself because I'm, I try to think very rationally and I'm direct and blah, blah, blah. That's just how I am. But I'm also super funny and I'm also super lovable and they don't. <sighs> Girl, are you really going to do this to me? <laughs> I'm embarrassed.
Hey, thanks, Mama. Well, according to, I thought I was German this whole time, like German and Basque, which is Northeast Spain. But apparently during uh, my daughter's 23andMe results, I came to find out I'm mostly Great Britain. Yes, and I will someday when my life slows down a little bit and I can do that. Oh yeah. Love life before Ash was nothing. I didn't really date. I didn't go really seeing anybody much. Um, I just kind of did my own thing. And I think I was single for like two years before I met Ash. Yes, I believe that the, um, the network wanted to see Ash in action and show his knowledge. You have to submit it to casting and then they, you go through a bunch of casting calls. And if they like you, they send you an offer. I always got people sliding up in my DMs. I always find this pretty interesting because everyone thinks I like do something crazy to my hair. I just use the natural stuff from Trader Joe's. I just like natural things. So it doesn't have a lot of harsh chemicals, but it's good stuff. I did hear that and I can't comment because I'm not a dumbass and I know that I'm on contract. Boy, don't comment on that. Okay, first off, I'm at the bank, guys, so don't worry. I'm just sitting in line at the bank, so don't think I'm driving and going crazy. But boy, don't ask that, okay? I'm 33 now, but still, my sex life is shit. Me, usually laughing at myself. No, I would say it's pretty bad. Um, uh, most men don't want to settle down until they're 50 or 60. And if they do want to settle down, it's usually uh, they want to have an open relationship. And they also want you to be into women as well. Yes, girl. DM me. Holler at me. I love my Seattleites. And guys, marrow or cannabis is not a drug. It's just a plant. It just grow like that. And if you so happen to set it on fire. It's actually so funny. I love my sweaters, they're from Zara, but it's total Seattle gear. Like, someone messaged me and they're like, dude, you are like Seattle mood right now. Yes, that's what we wear in Seattle. Yes, I love everything about Seattle. I love the people, I love the grunge scene, I love the music, I love the underground, I love the cannabis culture. And I used to only live like a mile away from Kurt Cobain's house. And so, huge fan. Thank you, but I actually don't. Never gotten Botox before. Um, I'm starting to notice crow's feet. And I'm also starting to notice su sunken in eyes. Um, but I'm getting fucking old. Uh, I absolutely love living in Seattle. I think that the freeze is just a cultural thing. And I think that we just kind of like know and are sure of what we want. So we just kind of like don't BS people. That's why I think it's hard for people to make friends here. But just to add a little bit more to that... Um, I think you can make great friends here and you would make genuine friends here because those people are actually genuine. If they want to hang out with you, they'll hang out with you. If they don't want to hang out with you, they're not going to fuck with you. And so I think that's what the freeze is. No. Um, in fact, that is a stipulation for me entering into any relationships. I always am very upfront and I tell them, I do not want any more kids. I'm two and done. Absolutely love my children, but I am done. My arm tattoo has SW for my oldest daughter, Scarlett. And then I have roses, which is for my grandma, Rose. The colors mean family. I have Beretta 92s on my hips. And because I love the boondock set. Hey guys, just a really quick message for you. I just want to talk about fear for a little bit because I feel like a lot of people are stuck in a fear mindset that whenever they get close to something that makes them uncomfortable or fearful, they tend to go back into their shell and back into their comfort zone and they don't progress forward in life. And I truly believe that fear is like a compass telling you where to go. Unless you are experiencing a traumatizing situation where legitimately you should be fearful, like somebody is going to be taking your life or you are in um, a bad situation, then yes, you should be fearful. But if you're not in any type of position that is threatening your life or threatening you, then fear is really a compass in telling you where to go. 
if you move towards fear, then, and you push through that fear, there's always bliss on the other side of fear. So if you're experiencing something that is making you uncomfortable and it's giving you anxiety and it's hard for you to push forward and you want to stop and you don't want to experience that, then you're only keeping yourself at the level that you are right now. You will never be able to progress and move forward if you keep retracting away from those fearful moments. Those fearful moments are fearful for a reason, but they're so liberating and amazing once you're able to push through that and teach yourself new things about yourself. When you can actually move through fear and move through uncomfortable situations, that's where the growth happens. That's where you learn more about yourself and what you're capable of. And those are the things that are so beautiful in life to experience. It's kind of like when you are about to jump out of a plane. The entire experience before you actually jump out of the plane is terrifying. In fact, a lot of people, if there wasn't a guy strapped to the back of you, probably wouldn't jump out of the plane themselves. They would need a little bit of help for someone to push them outside of the plane. But once they jump out of the plane, it's like pure bliss. It's like beauty. And all of those emotions that had been building up before that time are now gone. And you've now proved to yourself something that you didn't think that you could do. And so look at fear as a compass and guiding you where to go. And when you go through that and you move through that, then, you know, that's where you really start growing as a person. And that's just like me, you know, when I started taking steps in my life to change my life and start, you know, building a business or putting things out on Instagram with my food and really laying my life out there for everybody to see, that was extremely terrifying for me, but it proved a lot of things that I needed to prove to myself. Um, and I just continue on doing that. So, I mean, chase fear, chase fear, chase uncomfortable situations and prove things to yourself. Don't sit there in your own comfort zone because then you're not growing at all. You're not learning anything, you're not growing and you miss out on so many amazing opportunities for yourself. So, you know, go out there and do stuff. If it's making you feel uncomfortable and you're not in any danger, then that means you're in the right place at the right time. Go towards it and start growing in life. That's all I got to say. <laughs>